Hi, everybody. I'm Michelle Smith Boyd. Just in case you're just sitting down, um, this has been the best day ever. Um, I've had so many exciting experiences as uh, today's stage host, but now I'm about to switch gears. Um, from the technology track, now let's um, start a panel called The Transformative Power of Lighting. And for this one, I'll actually be sitting on the panel and um, getting off of hosting duties. I'm a Lutron ambassador and I love that team at Lutron. So let's watch this video from them first. Amazing. And now to introduce this session, please welcome Melissa Andresco, Chief Corporate Brand Ambassador for Lutron Electronics. Melissa, welcome. Thank you, Michelle, for the warm welcome, and thanks to all of you for joining us today. As Michelle mentioned, my name is Melissa Andresco. I have been with Lutron for 25 years, and I am the Chief Corporate Brand Ambassador, and so happy to be here today. Before we start, I would like to take a quick audience poll, just one question. By show of hands, how many of you have started or plan to prioritize lighting in your designs? Nice. So I'm gonna tell you, my prediction for next year, every hand is gonna be raised, and here's why. Lutron recently teamed up with the Harris Poll, and we learned that there is growing demand for high quality lighting in the home. In fact, 91% of US homeowners said that quality lighting is a very important design element in their home. 75% said lighting is one of the most important design elements in the home. So whether what's driving this is the wellness aspect, bringing the outside in to connect with the outdoor spaces, or maybe the need to repurpose rooms easily, or maybe it's just simply to create that warm, rich glow. I think we can all agree that lighting is that one element of the home that can separate a good design from a great design. Because let's face it, lighting is personal. Lighting sets the tone for the room, the activity, and what's comfortable for one person might not be quite right for the other. So as the title of our session says, lighting is transformative and immersive. And what that means is we can stand up here and tell you how wonderful it is in the warm, rich glow, but until you're actually immersed in the space and you see the lights changing around you and the shades moving up and down, you'll really have that aha moment once you're in that zone. And Lutron wants to give you the opportunity to have that aha moment here during KBiz by experiencing our Ketra natural lighting system in a home-like environment. Now, Ketra offers the widest range of pristine whites and vibrant colors, ranging from 1400 Kelvin all the way up to 10,000 Kelvin, which lets you recreate that feeling of sunlight inside the home. Bottom line, it's light for the age of well-being. Imagine being able to offer beautiful, tunable, customizable lighting. It's going to open up a whole new world for what you can offer your clients. Now, Lutron has a tiny home that's complete with our Ketra solution. We are parked in the KBiz Outdoor Plaza, which is just across the way from the South Hall entrance. And we are going to be doing 10-minute tours every 15 minutes. So you can either scan, there is a QR code that maybe your camera can reach. If you want, you can sign up for a time to come to the tour or swing by and we will make sure we get you set up with a tour guide ASAP. So again, uh, we look forward to seeing you there. And with that, I'd like to get right into our discussion. 
Now, we are very lucky today to have three lighting professionals joining us to give us their perspectives on how to incorporate the right lighting into your design. So here to kick off this important conversation is Lara Van Zyl, who is no stranger to lighting, and she works as the Vice President of Audience Development in Lighting at the Dallas Market Center. So again, I want to thank you all for coming. I hope to see all of you out at our tiny home for our 10-minute tours this week. And with that, I'd like to introduce Laura and let her kick things off. Thank you. Thanks, Melissa. Hello, everyone. As she mentioned, I'm Laura Van Zyl. I am the Vice President of Audience Development um, at Dallas Market Center for our lighting, lighting events. And that includes the Lightovation Show each January and June, which is the largest residential lighting show in North America, as well as Arclight Summit, which is our commercial lighting expo and CEU platform each September. So in this panel discussion today, I'm going to be joined by two industry leaders for expert insights on how to harness the power of light to create ambiance, influence our perception of our environments, and support personalized routines and a greater connection to nature. So let's welcome our panelists. We've got a great balance here today. We've got the perspective of a custom integration firm who brings the technical know-how to execute lighting plans, as well as a designer who creates the vision, because you need both to make the magic happen. So welcome Lee Travis, the owner of y Pliance, and Michelle Smith-Boyd, interior designer, television host, and Lutron design ambassador. And Michelle has been <laughs> Busy today as our stage host, but um, now we're going to hear his perspective as a Lutron ambassador. But let's start out by learning a little bit about each of your backgrounds. So Lee, let's start with you. So Lee Travis, owner of y Appliance, which stands for Wireless Appliance, which is a lot of what we can do with lighting today. We can put lighting in the areas you didn't even think you could put it before. We have three uh, locations, Seattle, Scottsdale, and uh, Spokane, which also services the North Idaho area. And we basically do audio, video, lighting control, shades, security surveillance, everything in the integration space. I am Michelle Smith-Boyd out of Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm an interior designer. And obviously lighting is incredibly important to us as designers. And even more deeply these last couple years for me as I've been working with a home theater company. So they are actually um, resellers of Lutron. And so I have to become very versed in the product and really understand how lighting uh, is more foundation than actually an afterthought. Oh, and I, and I do TV. <laughs> so yeah, let's talk about your different experiences with lighting and its importance to your work. So let's continue with the designer's perspective on that. Um, you know, as a designer, I feel like we are ultimately responsible for mood. Maybe that's not your definition, but it is for me. I think time, talent, intangibles come together to ultimately create a mood, right? And that's what I feel responsible for. And the idea uh, or the role of lighting is it enhances said mood, but it also allows our clients to control it once we're gone. So I think that's really important. Um, uh, Lutron's product via Ketra offers really dynamic and tunable light to really um, begin to explore what light quality means. And that's what uh, working with this company has really introduced me to. Um, so that, that's what I'm most excited about, having the control over it. They can literally duplicate and reproduce daylight during the daytime, and that's really important for the mood that I mentioned. We have it in our studio, so having daylight when it comes to colors and making selections and so forth is incredibly important to us. Lighting can really make or break a space. You guys can put together a, a beautiful design, but if it's lit poorly with lights that don't dim well or don't look good, uh, how you look, how the fabrics look, how the finishes look. So we work with a lot of designers to really, you know, pull that piece together to yeah. provide the right light for the right mood and make it really, really simple for your clients to use. Right. Let's talk a bit about how the different disciplines can work together, like an integrator with a designer, you know, because that's really what's going to ensure an optimum result in the end for clients. So can you talk so, a bit about, about that as well? For us, it's, it's really the most successful projects are where we're brought in early into the project. So as soon as people think, you know, when, think of us as like the audio video guys, so it's like an after that come in later. But on the lighting aspect, we're brought in early and most of the plans that we see are basically for permit set, right? It's lying layout, not lighting design. And so it's not designed to highlight your artwork, your furnishings, 
uh, your countertops, everything that you've done in that space. It's just designed to light the space to have enough lumens of light output to meet code. And that's not what anybody wants to come home to. Right. So the sooner we get involved with the designer and they kind of show us what their vision is for the project, what's important, all of our clients have budgets. And so it can't be the best of everything everywhere. I mean, maybe the laundry room doesn't get lit today the way, <laughs> the, the way you want it to be done because there's some important pieces of art or some sculpture or yeah. you know, shelving units and that kind of stuff that you want to light proper today. But we can plan for those in the future and have wire or access to be able to add layers of light over time. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. Um, the idea of education in what we do is really important at my firm. I feel like we're educating people on what we're doing while we're doing it, and lighting is a new discussion. Um, I'd say like it's still in the fledgling stages when it comes to this kind of investment, right? Because let's face it, this is good lighting, and it reflects the investment. But um, I think the earlier we talk about it, as you're saying, it gets our clients involved and they feel like a part of it and they understand, you know, lighting is one of those elements that takes your home from here to there. You know, either you're spending, um, like for instance, in the pandemic, uh, we had lots of clients who wanted to do uh, remodels. And they were thinking, oh, if I'm going to put this much money into selling my house, I may as well go and buy another one. But buying another house that would take you away from what you have, like really feel like something different, was more expensive than everybody thought. So, you know, in comes <laughs> the remodel. And lighting was one of massive element for making your current home feel like a new home. Um, it was something that we might have overlooked or they, didn't, they weren't as aware of or didn't have as many options in the original building process. You know, we all learned about general layer of light and sparkle layer, a layer in school, but now we have so many more opportunities to, to make this feel different and affect mood and, and create uh, homes that are our ultimate mood enhancers ultimately at the end of the day. You sound like you're in the middle of a remodel yourself. I am. <laughs> he knows more than he's saying. <laughs> I am in the middle of a remodel, and um, I also ran out of money, so what am I going to do, y'all? <laughs> so, so, I mean, adding this lighting can be like, you know, uh, uh, a great new outfit to go to yeah. a charity ball or something else. It just, it just you know, is, is new and exciting, and those layers of light can be added in over a period of time. Mm -hmm. And so it's not just down light, but it's really lighting these different layers of space to highlight what you guys want to highlight and have the right type of light for the right time of day. Sure. Like pre-artificial light, we had the sun, the moon, and then fire. And so we were used to light on the horizon in the early part of the day and light on the horizon at the end of the day, not this direct light like we're feeling over us right now. This doesn't make us want to have a glass of wine and a glass of bourbon and sit back and relax. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's not only what putting a great light source in, but it's knowing where to place it to create the right mood. And when right. it comes to education, we do a lot of CEUs with Lutron where we bring designers in, you know, have a lunch and learn. They come in, they get the credits they need, and we're teaching them about lighting. And they want to, they, they don't need to know everything about lighting. They just need to know that good lighting is important and then get us involved. They don't. And I should know more. And I'm going to lean on you, obviously, as a professional, but we should know more. It's important that designers are more educated on the technology that's happening, especially in lighting. I mean, at the beginning, it was just about how many Kelvins, right? I don't like anything less than 4,000 these days. Um, and obviously, it is easy to do it in the building process much easier, and that's why you want to start the conversation early. However, Lutron has a lot of great uh, solutions that are able to retrofit, so I don't want you to feel counted out for that. Even in my own space, in areas where joists were closer together, um, we had to use a different type of lighting. I love flangeless. Uh, or you just, it's all integrated and beautiful, but that's not real life always. So there are lots of things that can be integrated after doing a remodel too. You had mentioned about um, placement of fixtures and I wondered too about hiding um, some of the tech so that it doesn't detract from a designer's work as well, it seems like. So when we work with designers, we are trying to eliminate the, the what we call wall clutter. We're trying to just get that down to a simple, easy to use keypad. If you ask a client, do you want lighting control, they just say no because people say no to things they don't understand. If you say, do you want your lighting to be easy to control, they will say yes every single time because when they look at that set of switches on the wall, it looks like Liberace's piano <laughs> and, and they're literally in there for dinner trying to like adjust all these things and get it right and then it's competing with your artwork. So you put this beautiful piece of artwork and then right below it or right next to it is two stacks of switches which detract your attention away from that. Yeah. 
So you want it easy to use. And then as you look up, we like to quiet the noise in the ceiling. So instead of having these big giant fixtures, we can have smaller fixtures taking up less space. I kind of like giant fixtures sometimes. Th they give it, well, when it's decorative, when okay. you're just putting a decorative <laughs> fixture, a decorative fixture is art. Of course. Right? These other lights coming over the ceiling, we're not trying to look at the lights, we're trying to look at what you're lighting. Exactly. Yep. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm all for that. No, it's very difficult to make that Liberace piano across the wall look pretty, right? Um, even if you can't get your clients involved in um, it, being excited about quality of light, you can get them involved in the idea of customization. And those plates are stunning. Um, mine is, I have four, a touchpad with only four settings. It is daylight, bright, relax, and nighttime. I use two of the four. Um, I am surgical bright or relaxed. I think that's my personality too. I'm either up or not. One Clean of the, the house or relax. That's it. And that, I just, I like it as bright as possible so that I can see it. Maybe that has to do with my age, I don't know. But I blame it on work. Um, but, you know, finding out who your client is, if they're not tech geeks like we are regarding lighting, um, which most, I'm sorry, most of the men are, get involved in the technology part. You know, whatever way we can... Um, better communicate, I won't say manipulate, better communicate with our clients in order to get them invested in the process and, and what we really need from them, um, I'll take it. Um, but customization is a big deal for our clients um, because they're associated with luxury and Lucerne offers those um, opportunities. Manipulation can be a strong word, but if you, yeah. the designer, bring us the integrator in the project, we know where our bread's buttered, yeah. right? We are singing to your team, if you're like, hey, Here's the kind of budget our client has. Here's, I don't want you competing with the stuff that I'm trying to do. And we, here's what we want to accomplish. Let's, let's not go crazy and put, you know, big, huge TVs over here and lots of lighting there. So it's, yeah. it's you know, then we're, we're in step. Yeah. It's not like we come to the party later and we're competing. The idea, though, that you referenced earlier of actually hiding controls or concealing large fixtures in the ceiling, that speaks to our language solely because we really want the attention where we want it, right? Where are we investing our money and the mood that we're trying to create, whether it's uh, via color, texture, etc., and especially artwork. Um, so anything detracting from that, I like to hide everything utilitarian personally, um, even the light sources much of the time. So um, Lutron has really given me the opportunity to do that. And integrators like yourself keep me abreast of the new product. Well, and as we move towards more simplicity, products like Lutron's Ketra Lighting, where we can do you know, human-centric lighting, we're doing a lot of programming lately where on, just turning the lights on for the room, does a different thing at different times of the day. The customer's not thinking about that, but in the morning, you're trying to wake up. You want a brighter, cooler light. Exactly. Let's get those shades open. In the afternoon, you want to be, you know, cleaning the kitchen or you're functional. And at the end of the day, you want it warmer. Now, you can always change what that is, but by default, our clients just kind of live in these patterns. You don't want it to be this color at 8 p.m. at night. It's you one less thing up. to think about. Yeah. And it's beautiful because it's like a living finish. You know, I love how we love Unlike a Brass, how it evolves with us over time, lighting the same way every day throughout the course of the day. It's one less thing you think about, but it evolves with you and learning your patterns and explaining that to your integrator is a perfect way to create a really customized home. And, and we've seen the trend where we used to have clients who want, I want as many buttons on that keypad <laughs> as I, I can, and then we're looking down there, I'm getting these reading glasses out and trying to see what that says, <laughs> and now with the Elise keypads and Palladium yeah. keypads, we're basically just doing less buttons, but each button can do something different at different times. Oh yeah, it's etched in there. Um, the little, the four settings I referenced are etched into that Elise Backlit, keypad. Yeah. Um, mine is brass, and in the back, Hidden behind a drape, there are, there's one more pad with six settings. And so I have two party settings in the event that I have people over. Um, I've never used it, but it's very fun. <laughs> and you have it hidden because you don't want to guess no one where it's, it's the party hidden. button is? Yeah, I, I like the idea of the element of surprise. Okay. Um, I think one of my favorite things, I'm sorry, we just keep talking. <laughs> is that okay? <laughs> I forgot you had a moderator here. <laughs> I mean, because we do want to talk about some of the specific technologies or sure. things that are exciting you right now. So My favorite right now is still LiveR Slim. Um, I mentioned the idea of, you know, um, concealing everything utilitarian. Um, in, in the way that I like to see architecture happening inside homes now, I want to see less crown. I know I'm in the South, but I'm serious. Less crown, less baseboards, et cetera. If that baseboard, if 
the wall created a small soffit and we had lighting integrated at the bottom of the wall. There's this beautiful glow around the edge of the room. Just like we do under cabinets, we can do it for walls and so forth. And the Ketra products like Light Bar Slims allows us to highlight those architectural elements without bringing a sconce in or all the time or, you know, um, a picture light, an eyeball. You remember those, right? Yes. <laughs> Well, and when we do the light bar slim and toe kicks like that, we basically, we define our balance by seeing the vertical, where the vertical plane meets the horizontal plane. So especially as our clients mature, as we mature, you know, it, it, it's, you know, helping to see where that edge is versus a sconce up high and then you don't see where the edge is and you right. can trip on your own floor or stair or whatever. Aging in so, place. So that, that's a, you know, very nice feature. I yeah. mean, anything within the catcher realm is my favorite. So being able to have any color of light at any intensity at any time of day, in a fixture, in a art light, or in the light bar slim is really the best product. Now, yeah. can all of our clients put that in every single room? We would love it because then you'd have the ultimate flexibility forever and ever, amen. Um, <laughs> but so usually we'll just say, hey, is good lighting important to you? And they will always say yes. And we'll yeah. say, all right, what's the most important room? Whether we're talking to the designer or, or the client directly, and they'll kind of say, hey, this room is where we spend the most time, this is the most important, let's kind of work from there down. All right, um, I love that. But I also love um, the vibrancy that we can use on artwork. It, it literally changes color in how you see the art in a way that um, the, what the artist intended for us to experience when we see the piece, we will based on this light. And you can't even describe vibrancy. If you try to tell somebody that, it sounds like snake oil. It does. But then when you show it to them, I used to say you have to see it to believe it. And then I had a designer tell me after seeing it, she was like, you have to feel it to believe it. She was like, she, she would do it again? Will, will you do it again? Like she couldn't, no, can you just do it one more time? She couldn't believe it. So what is happening to the eye when? So uh, I'm not an engineer, so I can't tell you all the technology is happening, and I'm not sure that Lucho would even tell us all the technology. Right, I don't think we know all what, of it. What the secret sauce is, but I know they have a ton of patents around it. But the way that you can change light, the saturation and the colors of light uh, to adjust it on a piece of artwork, a, a piece maybe you saw it in a gallery, your client saw it in a gallery, it looks amazing, and you, you hit it with a regular light, and it's like, it looks kind of like it's dull cool. when exactly. you get home. And then you, you put the catcher lighting on, it looks fantastic, but then you put on the vibrancy mode, and you, or the, as the designer, or the client can just play with the levels and kind of adjust how much of that vibrancy you want. But it'll take a bowl of fruit and make it look like you're at the you know, at the Pike Place Market yeah, in Seattle, like it's the it freshest goes, fruit right off the farm. And it, yeah. for a piece of art, it looks amazing. It takes us from the grocery store to the Met. It's, it's incredibly special. And in that uh, showroom that I referenced for um, the lighting integration in home theaters, we actually used a vibrancy product on highlighting artwork. I have a client now in Detroit who's big in the art scene and I'm trying to get him to come to a demonstration so he can see it firsthand and experience it because that's what it all is, right? At this point, we're not just selling objects, we're actually um, introducing our clients, our clients to experiences at home and lighting is a big part of that. It should be considered foundation, more so as much foundation as the floor and building materials as opposed to the afterthought that it was when we first started working. Yeah, I mean, it's the experience. I couldn't have said it any better. Than that. Yeah. And what are um, clients asking for, or what do they need if they don't know to ask for it right now? What are your projects demanding right now? Um, I mean, so when, when you come to us for the project, if you could just kind of talk about what your goals and objectives are, what's important, what you guys want to display, designers will come into our showroom and use our catcher lighting to meet with clients to show them fabrics, leathers, <laughs> materials, woods, because it can show it in the most natural light and then different colors of light. And so we're, we're, we're finding that we're getting artists in to our showrooms and they're wanting to get it to show artwork that way and then, and then let people see what the, what the artist really intended that art to look like. That's incredible. That means you're really doing your job. That's a great showroom, seriously. Um, our clients are always asking for convenience and they don't know exactly what that means but our job is to help them figure out what that is specific to how they live. I think the other thing our clients always want is just simply to feel good at home. And I think that's a product of being locked in for a year and a half, you know, not being able to come outside. And so um, the idea of Lutron and Ketra being able to replicate daylight um, inside is pretty incredible. That plus plant life and greenery changes mood immediately. 
Well, and when you put the Ketra in that uh, natural mode, it will basically mimic whatever the sun is outside. So if we were outside, you'd see it's you know sunny midday here in Las Vegas. And so when you open up that big slider wall inside, outside, it's the same color light temp. Now you can adjust it whatever you want, right. but if you don't want to think about it, your clients want it to be easy, the clients don't always want to know the tech behind it. Most of you guys don't want to know the tech behind it. You just want to know that it works, that it's being installed professionally, right? And that it's going to make your project look phenomenal. That's the part that you care about. But to be able to see the outside and the inside in that natural mode, is they don't know that it's biophilia. Or they don't know that. <laughs> but it's, all it's, they know is it looks good and it feels good. And that's really all they care about. But it eliminates that feeling of, you know how you're locked in all day and you're focused on your work and then you open the door and you're like, oh wow, it's still bright. It's a nice day outside. It eliminates that feeling, like we've been missing out on something because we have it invited in. And that, that's a really cool customization for me. Because you'll notice that the, your spaces that are near the windows, right, that it has that light coming in from outside, but as you go farther inside, you don't yeah. get that. And this brings that all the way inside. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I think we're getting ready to wrap things up. Okay. So <laughs> Did we cover everything you wanted to cover? <laughs> <laughs> so we wanted to get um, each of your top three takeaways. So, Michelle, if you could. Oh, the pressure. Um, <laughs> top three takeaways. My top three, one of them is getting the client invested. Here's an opportunity to do so. You know, bring up points just like you did. Um, I think start early, um, introduce the idea of it early during the building process wherever we can. And um, what else would I say? Um, I, I think I'm gonna lean on the laurels that we learned in the beginning and understanding the layers of light and also exploring them all, educating ourselves on what's new, what's out there, what's available so that when we actually come to our clients to get them invested, we know what we're talking about. <laughs> uh, you already covered getting involved early, but for us, I would say it is, you know, uh, get yourself enough education that you know that lighting does make a difference and it's gonna feel different, but you don't have to know everything about it. A lot of people don't wanna bring up something that they don't know everything about and, and lean on industry experts, whether that's people from Lutron, whether that's integrators like ourselves, uh, to, to help out with that part. It's gotta be simple to use. That's what people are looking for today. They've had complicated automation systems and control systems. There's all this DIY stuff out there. People really want it to be one button easy. And then go in and get a, an experience. Go see the tiny house here. If you haven't seen that, you will walk away from there. I mean, that's a, a very quick presentation, but your eyes will be, you won't be able to unsee it or unfeel it in that case. Or, and go to showrooms around the country, showrooms like ours, whatever market you're in, there's a, a, a Lutron and a, a Ketra certified showroom that right. you can go to and bring your own piece of art in there. I challenge people, bring something from really? your home into our showroom, bring a piece of art in there and I'll show you what it looks like under the vibrancy. Oh, I love that. And they just, can you do it again? I love that. Can you do it one more time? <laughs> Let me tell you one more thing. This is so ridiculous, but you all will be able to relate. Um, I'm never away from my phone, but sometimes I don't want to get up to check to see if the door is locked or did I turn off the stove or turn off a light when I'm sleepy, but my phone is always nearby and I can control my lights from my phone. And that makes me very happy. It's the little things. It makes me so happy. It's better than the clapper, you know, because it's quiet, um, but it, it, it makes me feel like I'm at least a, a little bit, I have something to do with technology, just, just a little bit. I didn't think we were going to mention the clapper, <laughs> <laughs> but there you go. So if, uh, I know we've already started to engage with the audience, but it looks like Susan has a question. What is the rule of thumb on, on a budget and how much should be allocated towards lighting? Like what, it, what should it be? What has it been? That's a really good question, and I'm going to pass that to you. Um, I know what it's not. And, and I hope I don't offend anybody, but it's not what the builder says it is. Because the builder isn't always as abreast of what's happening in technology as we have to be sometimes because they're busy building, right? Um, legitimately, um, I have this fight all the time, which is why I say integrate the, that, you know, start that conversation really early with clients, especially during the building process. Because at the end of the day, um, when we get down to it and I have three cans in a room that's a thousand square feet, the builder doesn't know what I need. So it's important that my furniture plan is completely done before I start specifying lighting because I need to know where things are going to be or at least have some idea. That said. <laughs> so, uh, you know, when you first have a set of plans, it's done for usually permit and for layout. 
And so the builder has the electrician bid the plan, and he's not trying to put in the best lighting. He's trying to get the bid, and the builder's trying to get the bid. Exactly. So they both put in the cheapest stuff. And so then you end up with, you looking at that in your design, you're like, this is not gonna light what I wanna light. And so there's just a huge shock to your client when that number skyrockets. And so usually what we try to do is put together kind of a good, better, best per square foot range, or apply that to different parts of the home. Maybe the master bedroom, kitchen great room is the most important, so that'll get you know, the best, and better will be somewhere else, and then you have you know, the other rooms. Or we'll look at layers that you can add later, you know, budget-wise. I feel like the narrative that we're creating with the furniture and that we're trying to convey in each room is also considered art. You know, as much as what we're talking about, putting the vibrancy setting on, you know, something framed and, and lighting that, um, you know where the mood is important in the house. I'm probably gonna spend a little bit more money in the kitchen where the life really happens for most families. I'm probably gonna spend more money in the primary bedroom where those kind of conveniences and also customizations really, you feel the money you spent there. Um, and maybe, obviously a home theater, but then maybe the office, living space. Those four areas is probably where I would concentrate most of my dollars, especially with a product like this. And then if we have a client who's a collector, we can decide about where art's placed. It's definitely apparent when you haven't spent the right proportion of the budget. Oh, it's really paying. apparent. <laughs> I go over to people's houses all the time, and I'm, I don't even know how they live with that. You just, it's just this really, the lights don't even match. They're different colors. Yeah. They don't dim well. They start flickering. So there's just a big difference between, I mean, this is light. This would qualify as light, but none of you would want this in your projects. No. But no. It is, there is enough lumens here. We can see. You can right. read those cards. We're functional. good. Yeah, it's right. functional. Your favorite <laughs> actors don't look as pretty under bad light. Yeah, and that is your, the, your client's best art is the humans in their home. Exactly. Their children, their grandmother, their family, that kind of stuff. And so we all look better in better lighting. Are there any other questions? Great discussion. Thank you, guys. And ladies. Quick question. So are we still doing LED lighting innovation in showers? Are you? I'm not. Uh, no, I mean, in, in showers, we're trying to do layers of light in there once again. Like, there's times where you want direct light from above, but there's times where you want to take a nice, relaxing shower, have a time in your bath, not be in a hurry. It's later at night, and, and you don't want that bright light in your face. So we'll light up, you know, soap dishes, we'll have lights down lower. You know, in coves, you get indirect lighting, so you don't have lighting directly on you. I've not done that. That's really cool. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you need enough light to shave or do whatever you need to do inside the shower, right. but we, we don't want this, right? Right. So doing like a cove where you have indirect lighting in there, or you light the soap dishes, whatever, and it's, uh, we've got a, a series of lighting videos on our, on our YouTube channel, specifically that talk about by room, but just to kind of show different areas, there's like, do you want surgical lighting in there? Do you need to get right in and take your five minute shower and get to this conference because you're running late? Or are you going to be in there for 25 minutes, take a nice, relaxing shower after a long day to kind of exactly. wind down? You want to wind down. You want to wind down. You want nice, comfortable, warm, layered lighting, not light in your face. Smart. Is that an argument for being able to tune it, too? Because you may be using that room for different purposes. Absolutely. Different I mean, times of day. Tunable light or human-centric lighting is your absolute best option. Right? We just work with the designers because you may not be able to put that everywhere. Mm -hmm. But certainly, you know, I want the, the, you know, the primary bathroom to For be sure. almost like a spa. For sure. And I want it to feel like the nice spa you go to when you're on vacation and you treat sure. yourself. That's how I want it to feel. Yeah. Now, when I need to get ready in 10 minutes, I don't need that. I need, you know, right. let's get that light color temperature up and be woke up and productive. It's the quickest way to add value to your home, right? Updating that kitchen and also the primary bath, like he's saying. So the idea of having that kind of lighting, those kind of lighting options, human-centered lighting, would be a major selling point for resale too. Yeah. And you can make those spaces seem larger. You can make the bathroom seem larger, the shower seem larger in the way you light it. There was a kitchen. done with LED. I yeah. mean, so LED is the solution because you can do all Yeah, it's LED things. technology that's under that, but LED could be something you buy off Amazon for $10 and that's not, that might I'm having that fight right light. now. <laughs> it, it's not, light isn't light. And so if you just go check out some of these showrooms, you'll see that, that's, that there's a big difference. It's just like when you light art. When you light art on the walls, it pushes the walls out 
and you can bring that general lighting down later in the day. So it just makes the room feel larger and your focal points pushes them out. I feel smarter sitting next to you. Sam. Well, I'm hoping the design is going to wrap up. I, I, I hope my design skills are going to get better. So. I think she had a question. <laughs> and then we'll go back. We work primarily in the remodeling space, and so obviously we're doing a lot of kitchens and bathrooms, and I'm just wondering how difficult it is to retrofit a home for like the particular rooms that we're working in if it's already built. Um, I think, I mean, I never like to say anything's easy because clients will translate easy to almost free. But anywhere that you have a power source, so take a kitchen island, you usually, if you have a vegetable sink and you've got power for the garbage disposal in that, you've got power in the island. So we could do the toe kick, we could do underneath the island lip. How many restaurants and bars do you go to? And it's just got this dark bar, but if they just lit underneath there, it just provides depth and dimension to the space. In the bathroom, you can light the toe kicks. Those are great at night. You can use a Lutron sensor. So at night, it just lights underneath those cabinets, the toe kick, not enough to wake you up at my age. You, you, don't, you want to like stay asleep, stay Agreed. asleep, stay asleep. <laughs> you know, don't, don't wake up, don't start thinking. If you turn the lights full on, you start to wake up and that's not, then I'm, I might not be able to go back to bed. So, but you want safety lighting to get you to and from where you need to go in the bathroom. So in your bathroom cabinets, you have power. So. You can, yeah. you can, and, it, and I have, I'm sorry, go ahead. And the Ketra connects wirelessly, so that makes that part of it easy. You need a power source and you need wireless communication to do it. And Ketra is fantastic at that. Yeah. And so we can add lighting, as long as there's electrical power, we can add lighting almost anywhere. And so and, just think of all the layers in the kitchen, in the bathroom, in the shower, that you can add it to. Yeah. Underneath tubs, behind tubs, where you light the wall behind the tub. There's just, it's almost endless, the areas that you can add light to add depth and dimension. And light the details that you guys do. When you put something great on the wall, you need to light it to, you know, if it's just dark, it's not gonna, it's not gonna look like what you intended. It feels special. It, it um, kind of adds personal value to your home. You're walking through and you're feeling like this is done specific, uh, specifically for me specifically for my needs. Like you just said, you know, when I wake up in the morning or come downstairs late at night, I don't want to exactly wake up fully, but I also don't want to bump my shin on the, on, <laughs> on the island. Yeah. So I love the idea of that, you know, that's that soft layer of light, feeling like it was done specifically for my needs and increase that value at home. It's the one place we have complete control over. You should make it your best experience. And then the personalization, they can adjust the color and the vibrancy however they want, whenever they want, mm -hmm. and save that. It's that easy. So it's a lot of technology, but to them, it's simple to use. It's a simple button to control it, or it's done by motion, or it's done by time. We're just trying to take all those extra steps that a client would used to have to yeah. go through to get a lot of uh, the, the room they went. Yeah. Think about you know, car stereo systems where you used to you know, hold your radio station, you get to the radio station you want, you hold the button down and now that's the radio station, it's oh, a preset. God, the preset. The lighting isn't, I'm oversimplifying a little bit, but you wanna be like, okay, I got the room dialed in just the way yeah. I want, like this, this is how we would do it in a photo shoot, save. I love that. Yeah. Um, another answer to your question, especially with the, um, the recessed lighting, um, it's messy. <laughs> That's, you know, that's the truth, it's messy. Like you said, it's not easy, but it's really worth it. Um, um, I literally had to take the ceiling off and start over and then go back with new drywall. And depending on what was happening inside of those joists, et cetera, because it's, uh, I don't know if it's, especially if it's a multi-level place, depending on what's happening with those joists, it will help to determine which product you can actually use, but there's something to fit whatever, retrofit whatever you need. And then because the Ketra product is wireless, it allowed the bulbs in those solutions, we can do that without tearing the ceiling up. You wouldn't be able to put in, you know, one of the specific, you know, D3 art fixtures. Which I love. No, those are amazing. I mean, right. new construction, fantastic. Remodel, fantastic. But if you have a client that you did the design for a year or two ago, and, you know, maybe because of interest rates, they don't, they're not ready for a new project to do something, and you just want to spruce it up with some new art or interior or whatever and some lighting, it, you can really transform a space. Great. Are we still considering three layers of light, or is that an outdoor, outdated concept? I say minimum, personally. 
I say minimum, and that's up to you. You are the designer, you're controlling that narrative. You're telling our, you're telling our clients what, what we need or what they need. Um, but I think minimum. I think that there should be some downlight, i.e. recessed. I think there obviously should be some sparkle layer and just lamps alone, that's three. We hadn't even gotten into anything regarding washing a wall or a piece of artwork or you know, downlight on the perimeter or something like that that makes the space really special. Um, with cabinets and all that low voltage, that makes it really, really cool. So minimum three. Yeah, I mean, I agree that uh, I did, you didn't qualify to go to uh, interior design school, so I don't have a <laughs> limit on layers. But it's, you know, the, like Shrek, the more layers, the better. So it's, uh, I mean, you can literally, any, you can do a floating cabinet. It can be under the cabinet as you work your wall. It can be in the toe kick. It can be under the cabinet. It can be in the cabinet. It can be above the cabinet. We have, you know, basically down lights. We have, you know, underneath the bars and counters. We've got, now we're lighting artwork on the outside of the rooms to push that out. Then we're doing a cove so we can get indirect light so we don't have that. And then there you can have some fun with, you know, color and, and a pop and, and, you know, and for party mode. But so when people think light where you can change color, they think Las Vegas, the city you're in. People are like, <laughs> oh, I don't want my place to, I don't want to, well, some people do want to look like Las Vegas, but. And we don't judge. But, but in Seattle, they're like, I don't want to look like Vegas. <laughs> so, you know, but, but, but adding a pop of color is a great design element for a themed party. Oh, pink. We'll, we'll, we'll do it like on a slow color rotation. And people are like, was that just blue a minute ago? Oh, totally. Was it red a minute ago? for Valentine's or Galentine's, you know what, you know, you know, yeah. you can really have some fun themes with it. And so it's, it's fun as a pop of color. I'm gonna use my party setting when I go home. Is Just that a fifth layer, fun? <laughs> <laughs> Is there any other questions? No more questions, we wore them out. I think we did okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank, thank you, you everyone. <laughs> thank you to our experts and to Lutron.